Hello, you beautiful San Diego people. Um, today I'm gonna do a little sketch. Um, thinking about um angry cats in space. Anybody here familiar with Dexstar? Ah, one guy, one guy, one guy. Which happened to work for the company, Dexstar. Um, Sound the point. Of the Red Lanterns, a uh, little funny cat. So um, I'm gonna do uh, a little sketch talking about just drawing animals. I know, like with superheroes, you feel like you don't end up like drawing enough animals. Um, but sometimes it's actually good to draw animals. Animals in comics actually make the whole world. When you're working with superheroes, it's really important that you're world building and that you're portraying a real environment with, you know, backgrounds, um, emotions, shadows and light, and sometimes environments like rain and stuff. And one of those things uh, that really make a world and a universe feel more fleshed out is the addition of animals, whether it's like pigeons or anything like that. So when I was working on Rage of the Red Lanterns and we had to come up with a lot of Red Lanterns, as a joke, I based one of the Red Lanterns off of my cat, Dexter. And that, and between me and Jeff Johns, that became the character Dexter, who was in, in Justice 2 and has Justice League action, a couple of action figures and stuff. So the funny thing when drawing a cat is uh, I think I think you know cats are so full of different emotions. So uh, to me, Dexter because he's a Red Lantern, I always drew like him very angry. And you see now I'm like drawing a little cute button nose. This is kind of light. I'll so have to do it in ink for you to see it. But right now I'm laying out a mannequin, uh, basically of a cat face. And. Uh, you know, cats can be happy, cats can be, you know, angry, and I, I, that's why I thought it would be so awesome to have, like, with a colored lantern, to actually, you know, like, chip the uh, squirrel green lantern. I, I just think that, in, and especially a space environment, those little animal characters actually kind of give a, an organic feeling that people relate to, to an exotic space landscape. So, you know, with Dexstar, Sometimes I like to draw him happy, but mainly he's angry. Um, and right now I'm just going to basically lay out a big mannequin base. And it's very important to understand like how, you know, like your animal's anatomy is going to be completely different than, you know, your arms and whatnot. So um, it got kind of like this weird little elbow, like little bicep you know very cute and I think that's important when you draw like certain animals you, you know they kind of unless it's a lion or something that's ferocious they should 99% of the time be cute so right now I'm gonna just to make sure I'm staying true to the cuteness I'm gonna get that little button nose in there I, I guess you guys can see my mannequin there so before I ink this that's uh that's your little cat right there like little happy meowing little you know upsize eyes you know little i don't know what you want to call those like uh, you know little happy cat is the, eyes is the key to the cuteness the button nose is i don't I well see that's yeah that to me that's like the most important thing is the little button nose like because uh, button noses are manly you know i'm confident enough that i can talk how cute a button nose is um <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, see that button nose. See, once you get the button nose, you're all good. You go with your cat. You know, of course, you need little fuzzy ears. You know. How do you balance the fact that you're trying to make a really cute cat that also has flaming blood spilling out of its mouth? I just don't know how you balance that out. Well, that's the juxtaposition of Dexter. Is like one minute he's cute and one minute he's raging and meowing. And you know, the truth, the story behind that is. Uh, you know, as an artist at home, we have uh, chairs with wheels on our, you know, and Dexter, my cat, is always around my table. He's basically been around my whole comic career. So uh, he's about 11 years, 12 years old now. And uh, I'm not going to say I've never dropped a pencil and went to pick it up and hit his tail. So I'm very familiar with the expressions of a cat going from cute to angry. So... Um, I'm not a bad pet owner. I'm just saying he, you know, he likes to get next to a chair way too much. But he gets cat treats, so it's all good. So, uh, and I think the mouth is very important to have this little cute 
I like how I'm up here and I'm just talking about drawing cute stuff. Like, uh, you're not. I don't think that's what you're known for. I don't. No, know. no, no. I'm actually sure known Superman for superheroes, and... Superman, uh, stuff like that. But again, like I was talking about, animals and uh, an environment help ground the environment to a realist realism like whenever you can draw rain whenever you can draw weather effects those things make a comic feel more realistic and the same can be said whenever you draw like when i would work on superman i would make a point to make sure i drew pigeons so animals actually do make your world and comics seem more realistic or seem more just fleshed out in the sense that you know there's a, a sun rising and setting and there's I mean even in Green Lantern I had a shot of Hal Jordan flying uh, over the desert and I made sure to pull back and draw a turtle walking by I mean those little things actually let you know that the environment's hot that lets you know the uh, you know it, it gives a sense to the environment because a comic is a two dimensional silent format so you know like any any tools that you can have or use at your disposal to make it seem more realistic is uh usually a good thing so how so you're doing uh you're doing an orion comic for us in a couple yeah couple yeah months, right? uh, an orion one shot uh it was a new gods uh one shot that comes out uh in august i think august 2nd which uh, is in celebration of uh, 100 years of Jack Kirby. Uh, it was a really great throwback. Uh, I've been a big New Gods fan for, I don't know, at least eight years is when I got turned on to the Kirbyverse. Uh, and I, w I was really turned on by the book uh, Cosmic Odyssey by Jim Starlin and Mike McNola. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I was very familiar with the characters and uh, really looking forward to a uh, really, really big honor just to draw those characters. Um, but it was mainly a story between uh, Calabac and Orion, which if anybody's familiar with the original New Gods stuff was a running theme in New Gods was those two battling out. So how, you know, how is, two questions I guess. One is what type of animals are going to be in this one shot and then... How, how has Jack Kirby influenced you? Because it doesn't, at first glance, it doesn't really seem like your artwork is very directly influenced by Kirby. Uh, the first question, I didn't actually, I drew at the ending of New Gods a shot where we have a resolution with Orion and it plays off of his dialogue, but I actually drew like an exotic plant life. I pulled back in the camera and drew some exotic wildlife and some flowers blooming in mid bloom as an ending shot. Um, again, that was like making sure I painted my environment um, to the reader and gave some sense of an exotic alien landscape because New Genesis is, um, I don't, I don't, I'm actually not sure. Is New Genesis in like, just a planet in space or is it a different dimension? Because mm -hmm. I know they have to have a boom tube to get to New Genesis. Like you can't just fly to it. Like you actually have to have a boom tube. So, I think you have to have a boom tube. Yeah, I think it might be in another realm or something. But uh, I, I definitely use exotic plant life to showcase that. Um, just making a little happy eyes here. Um, but that and uh, and how I was influenced by Kirby really had more to do with uh, the way I drew Calabac and portrayed him. Um, Calabac, you know, is a very heavy, brutish, Kirby-esque monster type, heavy body set character, and I basically played off of that for the most part, you know. Um, but some panel layouts, I was very influenced by Kirby's uh, uh, foreground elements versus background elements and so on, so that was interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, it was, I, I, I it's real, everybody's, everything's kind of influenced by Kirby, but kind of, nobody can, dr I, I'm not a guy that can draw like Kirby, I'm not gonna, so I really didn't, I tried to, especially with Orion's bestial face, uh, get the Kirby feel to that, but like, it's really, really hard to, 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 to emulate an artist and not, and do them justice. I'm never really all that good at that. So, like, in the end, I really was, like, handling New Gods drawing for 99% the way I would normally handle my drawings. 
But it was a real honor, especially with uh, the fighting between Calabac, you know, and, and Orion. I really dealt with a lot of the issues with uh, that Kirby had set up between the two, um, with their strained relationship between multiple, you know, their one was raised by Dark Side, one's raised by High Father, but they come from the same place, so like, and they're the same in nature in a lot of ways. And you're you're writing and you're drawing. Yeah, yeah, just... yeah. That was uh, that was you know, which was very much like the Kirby New Gods. You know, he wrote and drew the uh, original New Gods, so it was a, that was a big way of pay, paying homage. I paid a big homage to Kirby in the story with the uh, the technology that makes the uh, fire pits of technol of, of apocalypse. So, kind of named it after Jack Kirby, the Kerbinex. <laughs> the, yeah, <laughs> the Kerbin Nexus, you know, like, so, like, I, I threw a, a lot of shout outs to Jack Kirby in there. I got to use Forger in it quite a bit, which is another oh, one great. of my favorite Kirby characters in Light Ray, High Father. It was really just a big, you know, show of the original New Gods. The only character I didn't get to get in there that I wish I had on it, I'll just go ahead and say without giving everything away, was Metron. Like, I, I kind of regret not working him in. But there honestly wasn't enough room to have him in there. It's 48 pages, right? I mean, there's only so yeah, much. Only yeah, so much yeah, yeah. And I think it has some backup material, too, from uh, Walter Simonson, I yeah, think. So I there's a so. nice Walter Simonson uh, Orion story who's known for having a big Orion run. I think in the, was it the 90s he did Orion? or Late 80s, early 90s. Late 80s, 90s, yeah. So... It was really nice to just be a part of this type of celebration of Jack Kirby, and especially with Jack Kirby and what he did at DC. So it, it was just a big honor in general. It's like one of the highlights of my career is working on this project. When you're writing and drawing at the same time, what's your process for kind of mapping out the book and then uh, are you drawing as you're writing? What's what's your process? I, I actually did a full script. I normally won't do a full script, but um, in this case I did a full script. But... We did a full script, me and my editor, knowing that we would adjust the dialogue after it's drawn, which I think a lot of writers do that anyways, but we go into that knowing, like, I may... So there would be, like, one or two places where I would have to build what I would call a placeholder. Right now, I'm drawing uh, his energy field. A little... Uh, I don't mean to deviate, but a little uh, nod to Dexter is he actually wears his ring on his tail... So I actually need to draw that tail in there real quick and put his, like, ring. Are you just drawing this because you miss your cat and you'd prefer yeah. to San be Diego's on San Diego's a long, lonely trip is all I got to say. And, like, putting cats on planes is never easy. No, don't do that. No, 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 no. <laughs> Carry it. Cats is carry-ons. Cat carry-on. <laughs> that sounds like a funny uh, skit right there, cat carry-on. It's uh, not funny for everybody around you that's yeah, yeah, sitting yeah. next to a meowing cat for three yeah, hours. Yeah, cat, yeah. So, but Dexter doesn't actually like to travel, so that's, he's never been to a convention, so. But uh, it, it, writing and drawing is actually a weird thing because uh, you actually see something from two different angles. And when you're working in a comic script, like if I was working on Superman Earth 1 or if I worked, uh, you know, uh, with Jeff Johns on Rage of the Red Lanterns, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, there becomes like a collaboration on the page where it's not... In some places, the writer kind of knows to leave something kind of loose for design reasons of the page, and sometimes things are really tight because of the dialogue of the page. But, you know, working with certain writers, you come across, like, different, different techniques and different collaboration processes, so, like... When I'm writing and drawing, I know in some areas, especially with action, that that panel count might change on the actual page a little bit. So I try to keep that stuff kind of loose. Um, and a lot of writers do, in a way, keep the action a little bit loose. Um, just because you don't know, like, uh, what panel... I mean... Because when you say, hey, I want a half-page shot of uh, Batman punching Superman... You know, you have to really account the other three panels are going to be s small. And it's like dividing up a pizza. So whenever you have an action shot, you know, if you want a half-page shot, your the remainder of your page, the, your page can't grow is what I'm saying. So you have to kind of keep a relative mindset of space and pacing, especially with action in comics. It's 
kind of difficult. Actually, a lot of writers will mention that they think that writing action is not all that easy in comic books. So, I mean, I've been drawing comics for a long time now. So, like, I've came across a lot of action sequences. And I've learned a lot from action sequences on what works and what fails, you know. And comics and especially that type of stuff so it's a little bit back and forth I mean you know uh, but a lot of the greater s scenes whether I wrote it myself or I had worked with a writer are usually kind of loose when it comes to action because um, it's really more about the space and the pacing to, that's actually the, the number one thing is space and pacing when it comes to action do you do you prefer to have a lot of notes in your script then or not as many well, the more notes there are, it can kind of logjam a thing if the guy's not on page with the action. It's weird because comic book action actually has a lot to do with... Um, I do a little bit of, just for exercise, boxing and kickboxing for about like eight years. And like the difference between real fighting and comic book fighting is what in boxing terms they call haymakers. Mm -hmm. So, like, every comic book punch is, like, this overthrown haymaker where the arm's fully extended and the guy's flying backwards. Every single punch is like that. And in real life, you don't do that because you end up, you open yourself up for a counter punch. And if they weave, you're just, you're screwed. You're laid out. So, that's the reality. So, understanding the reality of fighting versus comic book fighting is very interesting in a sense. So... I personally, if I write, I know that I need to, I, I try to work in some real fighting techniques whenever I can, and they're very far and in between, but I understand the dynamic of haymaker fighting in comics, and I also keep that in mind and try to use that when I can, so it's very interesting we're talking about all this manly stuff, and I'm drawing a cute cat, <laughs> and I'm just saying, like... So anybody think he, any, any additions to the cute cat here, anybody? Anybody want, like, she, she thinks he, see, if that I one chick, yeah. the, the black canary likes this cat, that's all that matters, that a bird right. likes a cat. Okay, exactly. if I can win over a, a, a bird with a cat, <laughs> I did my job, that's all I'm saying. So, uh, but uh, this is, uh, of course, to get the all you can out of the energy field with any Green Lantern character, you need you need a black matter behind them to really pop out that glow. That's not necessary with color technology, but it helps. The more black around the character, the more they seem like lit up. Also, that's again why the Green Lantern suits work so well with black uh, in their costumes. Is again, it it builds that black and white contrast that makes it look more like he's glowing. So. But that's actually pretty much a done. Uh, yeah, ah, I missed a. Okay, I missed. I missed something that's really important here, and then I'm done. I don't mean to hold us up. But, you got uh, the button nose and I, the no, energy. No, I so got the else? button nose. But the thing with Dexter is he's is he's jacked. You need, oh, you, need right. you need this rib. You need this no. Six yeah, pack. you need cats with I abs. I need a six pack sure. on this cat right here. Like sure, I get he's it. Got a, he's got that beach bod. You know, he's 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 been doing crunches. He's got to keep the ladies happy, you know. This like, cat is in better shape like, than I am. Yeah, is he is. Not he is. Good. You know, like when the cats are hot, it's all the ab work from fur balls. Oh, when right, they're like, right, ha, right. Ha, right. Ha, it's Makes like sense. it's ab work. It's like a type of mini crunch going on there. A lot of work goes into coughing up a hairball. If anybody's ever had dry heaving, not saying you're that type, but you know what I'm talking about. This demo got real weird. Yeah, well, that, and that's why I picked this, because I'm like, if I'm going to do a demo, let's just have something fun, you know? And and that's how this character got created, is I was at the board, and I'm like, I'm drawing a million ugly monsters. Let's throw something fun and cute in there, and then we decided to keep it. So that's how the character got made, was doing something, what looks, we just did here. Looks amazing, dude. Yep, yep. Thank you. Everybody, yep. Shane Davis... We're going to ask you a trivia question to give away this thing. Do you have a trivia question you want to ask? A or? trivia question. Uh, could be about your work. Can be actually, about, I do. I have yeah. a weird trivia question. Nobody will know, though. Is that good or bad? That is not helpful to give That's away. That's not helpful? No. Okay. no, I mean, it's a DC trivia okay, question. No, okay, well, we can ask okay, you. Okay, uh, the character for uh, you New Gods fans, uh, the character Light Ray, where does he keep his mother box? Huh? No. 
that's a nobody knows. Very okay. hard question. I don't know. Uh, that that was very awkward. Okay. Yeah. Um, who is uh, who is uh, Orion's adopted father? Hi, hi, that is yep, correct. Yep, it yep, is the high yep. father. Static got it. There you go. There you go, Static. All right, Shane Davis, everybody. Give him a round of applause.